uh, we can use RStudio Cloud probably. It was very easy recently, but uh, there are some changes um, and I'm not sure that it is so easy now. Uh, so, Uh, so uh, let us uh, check that everybody can uh, run our studio. Just let me show what uh, should you see when everything works correctly. No, not necessarily this thing, but Okay, you can probably uh, you can probably look uh, at at something like this. Without all these red errors, something like this. Do you have this thing? Okay, uh, if um, if you don't have this thing, just let me know. Uh, yeah, you have this uh, console window uh, and you can write some expression here and uh, hit enter and you have to uh, obtain uh, the result. Uh, you can just write some arithmetic expression like use R as calculator and uh, and get this result. So uh, I want uh, everybody to be able to do this thing. Otherwise, it is in, not possible to continue. So let me know that everything. Um, so if, if it doesn't work uh, for you, just let me know. Or if you need more time, again, just let me know. Mm -hmm. So if you if you are installing, uh, if you are installing, probably uh, you can. Uh, go to our studio cloud. Let me try. So you can you can try to register at our studio cloud. I just uh, sent uh, a link to the chat, and um, you can use a free free account, and it will be enough uh, for to begin. So probably it is uh, easier and um, faster than uh, install this our studio cloud now. Now this uh, this our studio now. and everything will work. <coughs> I succeeded to install it. Great. Okay. So, uh, so everybody, everybody can can do this thing, right? It works. Okay. Actually, nobody can answer a question uh, that starts with uh, is it true that everybody can uh, do something because uh, all uh, because every student knows something about uh, themselves but not about uh, everybody else? Well, at least in Zoom, it's not necessarily true with uh, with offline classes. Sometimes you may make judgments about all the students who are present <laughs> there. Right? Um, yes, sometimes. Can I ask? Uh, sure. Uh, can I do something? Okay, can I uh, see simultaneously my R Studio and you? Is it possible or not? 
Uh, yes, Zoom can be run uh, in a small mode uh, when uh, it just it just a small window. Let me. In just a second, I will uh, try to find uh, where it is. Hmm. I myself remember that it can be organized somehow, but I don't remember how. Uh, probably you can just uh, split uh, the split screen and uh, uh, and resize your window with uh, with my my screen sharing. Actually, only uh, the the only thing you need now uh, is my screen sharing. So if you can, if you can minimize this window, then everything should work. Oh, I succeeded. Okay, good. Um, so uh, let us begin uh, studying our language. Actually, the thing that we opened now uh, is uh, is called our studio, as you probably uh, already guessed. And this is uh, a kind of interface to our programming language. R is, is a programming language just like Python, uh, but a, a little bit different. And uh, it is, uh, unlike Python, R from the very beginning was developed uh, with uh, statistics in mind. And there are a lot of packages that uh, are created uh, to perform different kinds of statistical analysis in R. Uh, but now, uh, today, uh, we mostly will study some basics of uh, basics of uh, our uh, language, and uh, to do so, we can just um, invoke some commands here in this console, uh, and uh, they will be executed immediately, and we uh, we will get uh, the result here. Um, by the way, you may be probably interested in uh, what this number one uh, means here, uh, but uh, I will explain it uh, just a little bit, uh, um, a little bit later. Uh, so uh, basically, this is uh, this is our comment, and this is uh, the result. Mm -hmm. And uh, another way to work with R is to create. Uh, so-called R notebook. Uh, I don't know. Uh, are you familiar with uh, IPython notebook, Jupyter? Did you have the experience? A little with... bit. Uh huh. Okay. Then uh, R notebook a is something that is close to Jupyter notebooks, uh, but uh, a bit different. So if you put a file, new file, R notebook. Uh, probably it will ask you to install some packages and you better agree. Uh, actually, usually when our studio asks you to install something, it is better not to argue with our studio and just to agree. Um, uh, and uh, after that, uh, you will be able to work in uh, this uh, R notebook. Uh, and uh, this uh, notebook uh, contains just a text in markdown uh, markup and uh, they call it chunk so uh, some parts uh, of code um, and you can execute uh, these chunks uh, you can do it um, by uh, on mark it is um, i think shift command enter and uh, you can also just uh, click on this uh, button, or you can just look at uh, here. You can see uh, the shortcuts that you need to uh, run uh, the chunk. This chunk contains only one line, uh, and you can run some line, uh, or, or you can run the whole chunk. Uh, and you see again that you have the result of the execution of this chunk. 
and you can uh, add new chunks. Uh, again, you can do it by, uh, for example, um, by clicking on this thing or by uh, corresponding, uh, corresponding um, shortcut. In my case, this is command option I, uh, but it is on Mac. Or you can just literally uh, write triple back ticks, then R, then again triple back ticks, and write here and then you know, code that you want to be executed. Um, um, yes. I just wanted to tell about my problem. Yes. He suggested me uh, me installing. I mm -hmm. clicked yes, but. He said that he can't do that. Okay, yeah, that's uh, that's a usual problem. Sometimes <laughs> goes wrong. Uh, uh, okay, oh, uh, probably, um, probably the better way to resolve it uh, is just to discuss it later. And now again, you can switch to our Studio Cloud. Probably everything is already installed there, because so sometimes it just uh, need. Uh, to get some uh, paths uh, to be set to some location where you can write. Uh, but uh, I'm not sure that I can uh, say, uh, I'm not sure that I can provide any universal advice uh, that will uh, work in any case. Um, so just, Mm, yeah, I suggest to postpone it. Anyway, we don't need our markdown uh, actually uh, uh, today. So you can, uh, you can, if you if you cannot use our markdown, you can just use this uh, basic features R script. In this case, you just write a code that have to be executed, and again, you can uh, you can uh, say that you want to run it. And uh, then, uh, as you see, it will be executed here. Uh, probably you have to select everything and then and then click run. Um, the only difference with R Markdown is that you will have result here in console uh, and not in the same document that you are working with. Uh, so, okay. Let me uh, uh, let me return to to this notebook because uh, it is easier to follow when everything in one place. Uh, so, uh, this is basic arithmetic. Uh, we can find something more uh, complex. For example something like this i found square root of five and then um and then find power of 10 of this uh, value so this is uh, this is power uh, this is square root more or less as usual uh, then um uh, beyond the basic ar arithmetic uh, we have to deal with some variables and we have variables in r and uh, here we have the first difference uh, between R syntax and Python syntax, uh, because to uh, create a variable and uh, assign it uh, a value, uh, you have to use this uh, symbol. Uh, this is just uh, two symbols, less and minus. And uh, this, uh, this compound symbol, uh, is assignment operator in R, just like uh, equality in Python. Uh, the funnier uh, uh, side is that equality also works as assignment operator, but uh, due to some obscure reasons uh, I'm not fully understand, uh, people prefer to use uh, this, uh, uh, this arrows instead of uh, this equality as an assignment operator. Uh, so uh, anyway, um, this uh, is, I think if you, if you have any, any experience with Python, uh, this is more or less um, uh, known. Uh, uh, this is more or less a uh, known notion, uh, the variable. So you can just use, uh, 
these variables later. For example, I can um, find this thing. So here I assigned uh, the value of 25 to variable x, and then I try to find uh, x plus 3, and uh, this value is substituted instead of this x. Uh, so this is uh, more, or less, more or less as usual. And uh, if you open, uh, actually, uh, I think that uh, you already can see it uh, here on, uh, on right top corner, uh, you see your environment and it contains all the values that you um, created, all the variables and their respective values. So uh, we see here that we have X uh, variable with value 25 and Y with value 10. And if I uh, do something like, uh, what happens if I uh, run this cell? It can't run. Sorry? I think it can't run. Um, yeah, uh, it, it will increase X by one. And you see that now X uh, is 26. And if I run the same cell multiple times, it is possible. Uh, then you see that every time I run it, uh, it increases X by one. Just because uh, it is exactly what is written here. It, it is written that I have to find uh, the value of X plus one and put it uh, in the same variable X. Uh, one funny thing that you can do with this arrow uh, is you can write it in the reverse, uh, in the inverse direction. Uh, so uh, for example, you can write something like this and it also works. So uh, you can make this assignment not only from right to left, like in Python, but also from left to right. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so basically working with variables um, is very similar to uh, what you do in Python uh, when we speak about just a single variable. Um, by the way, you probably know about uh, data types, uh, about variable types in programming languages. And um, uh, as for uh, R, uh, as I said, uh, in contrast with Python, it does not distinguish uh, between uh, float and integer. Uh, you see that uh, 32 is uh, the same thing as 32.0. They are just uh, the same, the same values. Um, and uh, there is, uh, there are different uh, variable types in R. For example, uh, there is a string type, something like this. And uh, so a variable can contain not only numbers, but something different. Uh, working with strings uh, is uh, a bit different uh, when you compare it with Python, uh, but uh, we will uh, discuss it later probably. And now uh, let, me, um, let me discuss uh, the uh, most important uh, difference between Python and R uh, when we are discussing um, some basic types. Uh, actually, uh, um, you, you probably remember that in Python, uh, there are uh, data types uh, that uh, represent uh, some series of values. Uh, for example, there are lists and um, you, probably, you probably worked with lists uh, in Python. And uh, there is some difference between Python and R here. Uh, we also have lists uh, in R, but they behave uh, a little bit different. 
And also we have a new notion in R that um, is uh, that is different um, if we compare it with Python. Uh, we have so-called vectors. And uh, to create a vector, you can use, uh, for example, this uh, letter C. Uh, now uh, I created a vector. Vector is something like an array, uh, and it is loosely related to Python lists. And uh, you see that here I store in this variable v uh, these collections of values. Uh, and uh, just like in Python, I can address uh, a particular value in uh, this series. And uh, this can be done by indexing. And uh, how do you think, what is the result of uh, execution of this cell? How do you think uh, what happens? It will print a third number. So 12. Uh, uh, okay, but which one? Uh, if you have v, uh, v is v equals here. So what is v of 3? It's 34. Uh -huh. So there are two possible reasonable answers uh, to this question. Uh, it can be either this 12 uh, or this uh, 34. And if it were Python, it would be 34 because Python's enumeration uh, starts with zero. So from Python's point of view, this is zero's element. But uh, in R, it is different because uh, R uh, starts counting with one. So uh, from our point of view, this is element number one, this is element number two, this is element number three. So uh, when I asked V of three, uh, I get this number 12. Finally, reasonable guys, I would say. Uh, no, uh, no. Uh, as everybody knows, uh, the the only uh, the only right way to enumerate objects is uh, to begin with zero. Uh, uh, so I believe it is a huge mistake to enumerate elements from one. Uh, but but alas, uh, developers of R are of different opinion. Of course, they are wrong. Uh, uh, but we have to just to accept it. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, also we can uh, select several elements. Uh, this, uh, the syntax is uh, very close to uh, uh, the syntax of Python. Uh, for example, uh, I can get, okay, something like this. Uh, again, uh, it will be in contrast with Python. What do you what do you expect to see if you write these things uh, in Python? Uh, it will ret uh, it will return numbers between two and four. I mean, yes. Which one? Yes. In this case, uh, in Python. You mean? Uh, yes. If it if it if it were Python, and this is the content of um, your list. It will return from 12 yeah. to, yes. Yeah, two, two elements only. Yeah. Uh, but in R, it is uh, everything different uh, because it will return uh, three elements. So it includes uh, the first element and the last element of the range. And it returns uh, this, these three elements element number two, number three, and number four. Again, I would say very reasonable. No. Uh, it is not very reasonable, for example, because if you need to find like, for example, if you are interested in a first half of your array and a second half, you will have to think um, hard about 
uh, the enumeration and indexing in this case, and it is very easy to do it uh, in Python. But uh, nevertheless, uh, we have what we have. Uh, excuse me. Yes. Uh, how can I do the uh, square bracket? Oh, I don't know. It depends. It depends on the layout. I have I have these square brackets uh, in the upper uh, upper right corner of my keyboard, but uh, it it actually depends on your on your keyboard layout. Ah, okay, fine. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so excuse me. Did I yes. understand correctly that in in our second, uh, I mean, two is actually second, not like yes, two two is actually second. Yes, 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 correct. Yes. Thank you. Enumeration, enumeration is from one, right? Mm -hmm. And actually, uh, how this uh, how this stuff work? Um, actually, we have the following: if I just put uh, this expression, I will get a vector uh, that consists of uh, three uh, that consists of three elements, just natural numbers from two to four. And if I put this vector, so this is basically this two, uh, two colon four, it is the same as this thing. Actually, I didn't say it, but this C uh, is, uh, it, it stands for concatenate. So it just concatenates these numbers and creates, and creates a vector. And so this, these two things are the same. So you can basically use Uh, use uh, the same notation here. It just says that I want to get from the vector v uh, elements uh, with indexes two, three, and four. And of course, I can do it uh, in any way I want. Uh, for example, I can get something like this. So you see that I asked for first element, then third element. Uh, this third element is this 12, and this is here. Then fifth element, one, two, three, four, five. This is this 12, and this is here. And then uh, second element, uh, which is five, and this is this five. So this is pretty, uh, pretty flexible. We don't have such things in Python, at least until we use NumPy library. And uh, another uh, thing uh, is that you can use negative uh, values. Again, it is in contrast with Python. It will return your everything except of this element. So I asked to return the same, uh, the same uh, vector as v but I just uh, remove this element with index five. And I have this thing. So negative values just mean remove this element. Uh, there are other ways to select elements uh, in R, but uh, we'll discuss it just a little bit later. And now I want to uncover the mystery of this number one. Let us create some large vector. Uh, can you guess now uh, what this number means? number of elements in a line. Uh, yes, actually this is, this value is an index of the first element in uh, this line, or uh, which is the same, the number of elements in the previous line, as you said. So, mm, not exactly, but you have to plus one. Okay, anyway, 
uh, this is the number of uh, the, this is an index of of the of the, of the first element. Uh, so uh, it is natural that if you have uh, a very short vector, then uh, first element on the first line is just one, and this is this number one. And if you have large vector, uh, then just to simplify um, to simplify your orientation in this vector, uh, R provides this these values here. Um, uh, what is uh, really different if I return to to this output, what is really different between R and Python is that uh, in a sense, we don't have a single numeric uh, value in R. Uh, there is no distinction uh, between a single, a single value and a vector that contains only one value. So for example, if I do the following thing, Oops, it doesn't work like this. Uh, it works like this, yeah. Uh, you see that uh, we have the value that is just a single value in this variable. So just if you have one value, it is the same as you have a vector that contains uh, this one value. And uh, actually now it makes uh, more sense uh, to Uh, this notation makes uh, a bit more sense uh, because what happens in this case? In this case, you have uh, these vectors and you just concatenate uh, these single vectors into one long vector. And actually, uh, what happens if I put, if I do something like this? How do you think what will be the result of this expression? What is possible to expect? Perhaps one, two, two, uh, three. Uh, so uh, you will have a vector uh, with how how many elements? Four. Four elements, right? Yeah. Actually, uh, this uh, this common says that you have to concatenate uh, two vectors, uh, this vector and this vector, and uh, in this case you have. Uh, a vector of length four, and uh, this is here. Actually, that means that you don't have uh, nested vectors in R like uh, we had in Python. In Python, it is possible, for example, if I if I need a table in Python, then I will create uh, I will create something like list of lists. In R, uh, I cannot create vector of vectors. Uh, vector is just something that contains uh, some numbers or strings or something like this. Vector cannot contain another vector. At least I don't know how to do it. Uh, so uh, to consider more complex data types, we have not to stick with vectors. We have to consider another another things. Uh, but this these vectors. Um, Despite of all these things, these vectors are pretty straightforward. So are there any questions about, about vectors? Uh, I have a question. So mm -hmm. in this row of uh, numbers, I don't know, I don't know like where there's a bunch of numbers, there is, uh, there is no two. So there's uh, one, and then there's, I think, no two, and then there's three. So is there a reason for that? Sorry. Uh, sorry, could you repeat, please? Uh, yeah, so in that uh, row of numbers uh, that's above, the, the, when there's a bunch of numbers, like a mm -hmm. lot of... Uh, yeah, yeah. There, there is no one, and then three, four, five, there is no two. 
Yes, because I just asked, uh, I asked uh, from three to 100, uh, yes. uh, so this is just a common that I used. Uh, actually, it is possible to generate uh, to generate some vectors programmatically. Uh, for example, there is a dedicated function SIC uh, that allows you to uh, create different kinds of sequences. For example, uh, this is uh, this thing is uh, the same as this thing. Uh, but if you need uh, something more complex, uh, then you can. Wait, sorry then you can do something like this so i have values that are factors of three because i just get three and then i add three until i get some value that is larger than 100 or probably it may be more interesting to use uh, this thing uh, note uh, by the way that uh, if you have some function uh, and you work in RStudio, uh, first of all, you can use uh, tab inside of this function to get uh, some help on the parameters of this function. Uh, for example, here uh, I see uh, that uh, we have, uh, for example, I can, uh, I can, I don't know what happens, okay. This is how I can generate five values from three. Uh, and this is how I can generate five values beginning from three with step two and so on. So uh, you have this help. And uh, if you just want to read some help about the function, you can uh, just uh, uh, use F1 on your, on your keyboard. Uh, F1 button, and uh, if you have if you have modern MacBook, uh, then you have to um, press uh, button Fn, and then you will have F1 on your touch bar. And uh, on most computers, uh, there is a physical F1 key, uh, and then you will get some documentation on the function here. Um, it is not always uh, very uh, easy to read this documentation, but uh, at least it is something. Uh, so it is useful to use this online help. Uh, and uh, another uh, another function that uh, may be uh, useful is rep. Uh, this thing just repeats something given number of times. So in this case, I said that I want to repeat uh, values one, two, three, 100 times. So this is how you can construct new sequences in your, in your vectors from, from some known vectors. And um, Okay, let us discuss some other data types uh, in R. Uh, for example, uh, instead of vectors, uh, we have uh, another data type which is uh, similar to Python's dictionary, I believe, uh, but uh, it is called list in R. And uh, it works like the following. For example, I can do something like this. So uh, here I created list uh, that contains uh, four, uh, that, 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 that contains three elements. And uh, these elements are printed here. Uh, and you see that uh, these elements, um, so uh, actually R says us that to access, uh, for example, first element, I have to use this double brackets
let me try. So you see that uh, if I use this double bracket, uh, then I can access uh, this element number one. Oh, let me choose better element number two. And these double brackets, uh, it does not mean that you have just bracket inside bracket. Uh, this is just just like compound character that is used uh, in lists to access their elements. Uh, I actually forget to mention that in vectors, you cannot uh, you cannot mix different data types. For example, if I have vector, and if I try to do something like this, I will not get an error, but uh, I will get everything converted to data type uh, that can store uh, all the values. In this case, I cannot uh, store uh, my numeric values in the same vector uh, with uh, string value. And so instead R converts all these numeric values into strings. Moreover, uh, if I try to replace, for example, if I try to replace the value with some other value, uh, It works. I thought that it will uh, it will uh, truncate my uh, string, but it seems that uh, it does not truncate it. Okay, probably the behavior is changed recently. Uh, I believe that uh, at some time it it was truncating, but maybe I'm uh, maybe I remember it from Python from NumPy. Uh, anyway. Uh, you see that uh, vectors are homogeneous, so they have only values of uh, one type. Uh, lists uh, instead are heterogeneous, so you can create list uh, that contains different uh, values of different of different kinds, and they will not um, affect each other. So um, it works as you see. So in, in this sense, uh, this list thing is close to Python's list, um, but uh, there are something that resembles Python's dictionaries. Actually, both uh, vectors and lists can uh, can be used uh, like uh, like Python's dictionaries because uh, there are such things as names uh, in both of them. But let us um, let me show uh, you how it works with lists. Uh, for example, I can do like this, like h. I can do something like this. And now you see that instead of uh, these values in double square brackets, uh, you have these names here after this dollar sign. And this is how uh, in R you can access um, the values when you have name uh, in uh, this list. Uh, this is basically very similar to access of uh, dictionary value in Python. So you uh, provide not 
uh, not a numeric uh, index, but just some other uh, some other index. Uh, so I think that uh, numeric indexes uh, still works. So you can use both numeric indexes and uh, this kind of indexes with names. Both are working. Uh, so, um, in a sense, uh, this uh, ours lists uh, work like, like, like Python's dictionary. Um, also, actually, vectors all, also can be used like uh, Python's dictionary. Uh, like you can do it. Something like this. And you see now that uh, we have, uh, instead of mm, just numeric indexes, uh, every value in this vector has uh, its name. And to access these elements, you can use these names. Note that you have to use square brackets here and not this dollar notation because uh, in case, uh, because this dollar notation is used with lists and not with vectors. This thing still works. Uh, if you have some uh, vector with names, and if you want to remove these names, sometimes you want it, you can unname this vector. So this just removes all the names. Are there any questions so far? I have one. May I? Yes. Yeah, maybe it's very basic, but uh, I don't. I don't, I don't manage to open the file uh, that shows the outcome, just like you're having, uh, like in Jupyter. Mine shows the outcome like in a lower window. Wh which file am I supposed to open? Uh, I think you have to do uh, is file new file our notebook. Mm, no, I think it's still the same. It, it has lower window with the outcome. Okay, um, probably you will be able. To, okay, let us discuss it after the classes. Right. I just will ask you to share your screen, and then uh, I will be able to understand okay. what's going on there. Okay, okay. but uh, anyway, uh, you can you can reproduce these things, but uh, it is it just uh, opens in this in this lower window, right? So the comments are executed, right? Yes, they are indeed. Okay, okay. Then I think we will discuss uh, after the classes. Uh, I just want to look at your screen. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry, so, I have a yes. question. Yes. Is sure. there a tool to check uh, which type of variable do we have? Okay, I think uh, I think there is some kind of type function. Uh, no, this is not type function. It is, uh, it is in Python. There is class function that allows you to uh, to check to check the type. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I think that uh, the most uh, close to Python's type is this class function. Um, actually, uh, um, actually, type system of R uh, is a bit different uh, from Python's. Uh, so basically, sometimes uh, it is not very easy to even define what is the type of a particular object. Yeah, but uh, anyway, this class, I think uh, it is uh, the closest that we have. 
So at least it says here that this is character, uh, which is the name for a string because string is, uh, is consists of uh, characters. So it is kind of collection of characters. And uh, here uh, it says you know, that it is numeric because it consists of numerical values. And this is just list because list can contain anything inside it. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Okay, uh, uh, how does the space work in R? Uh, space? Mm, um, how how we add the space? Mm, I, I know, I know. After the comma, we need to add space. But uh, how about other? Uh, uh, actually, uh, actually, spaces are mostly ignored. So, for example, uh, this thing is uh, the same than uh, this thing. So, in most of cases, spaces are used just to. Um, just to make your code visually more readable. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, other questions? What does C mean? Uh, what is this type of uh, variable? Um, you mean this C? Yes. Uh, this C is not uh, is not a variable. This C is a command that says that you have to concatenate uh, these values, and uh, the result uh, of uh, the execution of this command depends on the values that you have here. Uh, for example, if you have uh, these numeric values inside this C. Uh, then it produces your a longer vector. So um, as I said, uh, R treats these single values as uh, single length vectors. So it, it, it treats this one as a vector of uh, length one and uh, this two as a vector of length one again. And this C concatenates these three uh, vectors of uh, length one into one vector of uh, length three. But the type of this vector is determined, uh, actually there is no such type uh, in R as vector because, um, because uh, actually uh, any value that you just, like this value is also a vector. What is uh, interesting is the, what, what, what kind of values you store here. So if I just uh, ask for class of this uh, value, I will get numeric because all these values are numeric. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, also, uh, as, uh, as we discuss uh, different data types, uh, it is uh, useful to discuss uh, how to convert values from one type to another. Uh, there are uh, commands uh, that begins with S and then uh, data type that uh, you want to convert to. So for example, if I want to convert number uh, 12 to a string, one, two, uh, I use this uh, function S character. And vice versa, I can convert as numeric, for example, this string. Of course, it is possible that uh, I will try to convert something non-convertible and uh, I will get uh, error, but not actually, a, uh, not actually an error. This is a kind of warning. And then uh, instead of um, just making some exception, like if we are in Python, uh, R tries to convert and if it fails, uh, it produces uh, a special value an A uh, which is also called some missing value. And um, so uh, you see that it wasn't able to, to perform this operation, but some value is returned. Uh, for example, if I have, um, for example, let me uh, consider uh, 
the following. I have uh, these four values. They are string values. And I'm trying to convert them to uh, numbers, uh, to numeric vectors. How do you think what happens? Any ideas what happens in this case? It will convert each string into a number. Mm -hmm. And uh, what about what about this string? It will be twenty three and forty five. Um, no, uh, R is not uh, so smart. Actually, it uses a decimal point uh, as decimal separation and not comma. Uh, for example, in Russia, uh, it is used comma to uh, separate a decimal place and a decimal, um, okay, as a decimal point. But uh, in this case, uh, R uh, say that it cannot convert this uh, to numeric value and it produces a four element vector. So it successfully converted this, this, and this thing. And we have these values here. Uh, but uh, the fourth element of uh, create newly created vector is an A uh, because uh, it cannot convert to this, this thing. Again, you have this warning that uh, something went wrong when you converted uh, one uh, value to another value. Uh, also, uh, there is uh, another one in difference between R and Python that uh, I forget to mention uh, is the following. If you have uh, some, for example, you have two vectors two numeric vectors. And you use this operation plus for these vectors. How do you think what will be the result? Any ideas? There will be one C with the four numbers. Yes, it is possible. If it were Python, uh, then plus will work as concatenation. But it is not Python. We have uh, another command to concatenate here. We have this command C to concatenate. I got it. It's uh, C uh, square four and uh, six. Uh-huh. Uh, actually, actually, we have uh, we have four and six. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, because uh, actually all operations in R are um, element wise. So this plus uh, is element wise plus. So it just works this thing plus this thing, and it creates a new thing. And uh, actually, all arithmetic operations work uh, element wise. Uh, for example, if I get something like this, I will just find square root of each of these values. And it is also possible, I don't know, for example, to do something like this. So uh, I just uh, put all these numbers into corresponding degrees. One into degree two, two into degree three, and so on. So this is also element-wise. And sometimes it is very, very, very useful. Uh, so,
And there are any questions so far? Uh, yeah, can we go back to the, the string conversion? Mm -hmm. um, it is a little low. Yeah, here. Uh, so it converted 12 and 34 into numbers, but why did it stop? I mean, why didn't it convert 12.45? Uh, so it tries to convert everything that uh, it can. So it can convert uh, this value because it is just a floating point number. Uh, this numeric can be either integer or floating point, so real. And uh, it is uh, happy to convert this value and it works. Uh, but it cannot convert this value because I use a comma instead of point here. And R uh, don't understand what this comma means. Oh, I just thought that that NA thing was uh, not an arrow, but some different kind of output. I'm not sure what it is. Like uh, um, this, this is this the, uh, this result is an array. Uh, this is a vector, and uh, this vector consists of four elements. One of this element, element number three, is NA. Oh, I see now. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay, okay, good. So, other questions? Mm -hmm. uh, yes? If we use uh, ESQRT for uh, square root, it means quadratic coding, it's just yes. mm -hmm. but yes. uh, why uh, they were different? Can I look at it one more? Uh, is it mm. square root of each of the values? Yes. 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 Uh, it, it it works element wise again. Uh, so uh, it just uh, finds a square root of one, which is one, a square root of two, which is this value, a square root of three, which is uh, this slightly larger value, a square root of four, which is two and so on. Вот просто мне удивляет, что квадратный корень из двух такой странный. Не, но он 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 правда такой. This is Это как бы он действительно такой. Ну вот если это приближение, конечно, но вот давайте возведём в квадрат. Please speak English, Silvia Valerievich. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Is there I is there any way to build math uh, sorry? Are there any ways to build matrices in R? Uh, matrices, yes. Uh, there is uh, There is a special class um, which is called matrix. Uh, I actually, well, I'm not sure that I want to discuss it now in details because not so much uh, cases when you have this matrix, but uh, let me just show it. Uh, for example, I can create uh, I can create some matrix like, okay, something like this, and I can specify. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, this is matrix. Um, actually, something useful uh, we can get from this, from this matrix is, uh, first of all, uh, matrix is not, well, it is, uh, it is not list at it, and it is not vector, it is something else. And if you want to specify uh, some particular element here, uh, you have to use uh, just, for example, I want, I want this element, this number six. I just put two values in square brackets, as this notation suggests. And this is quite reasonable. And it is also, uh, very useful to know about uh, this notation. If I want a row of my um, matrix, I have to put uh, this comma. If I do uh, like this, it it will not work. Actually, uh, I don't. Well, it seems that if I put just one number, it uh, give me a result like this matrix uh, where long vector. But uh, if I want a row 
I have to put the number of this row and then put comma and then nothing. And we will also meet with this syntax later when we will discuss data frames. Data frames are similar to metrics. And if I want, uh, on the other hand, if I want column, I can use it like this. So here I specify that I want first column. As you see, to create metrics, uh, you can use this notation uh, when you specify all the elements and then uh, you have to specify how many rows and how many columns uh, these metrics have. I think that I can omit uh, one of these because it is uh, reconstructed from another. But anyway, I can create different matrices from the same data. Um, so yes, there is a dedicated dedicated data type for matrices. So, okay, uh, we actually discussed a little bit some descriptive statistics uh, today at the lecture and to uh, connect somehow our exercises with the lecture. Uh, let me show you some functions that, uh, uh, um, that finds this descriptive statistics. Uh, for example, we have mean uh, that uh, finds just an average like this. We can check that uh, this is actually what we expect. Yeah, that works. Uh, there is median. Uh, so everything works uh, more or less as expected. And also, uh, we discussed that uh, there is categorical variables and we have uh, factors. Uh, this is the term in R that corresponds to categorical variables. Uh, for example, I can create Okay, let us let it be city. Uh, so uh, you see that I use this S vector to convert uh, my uh, vector of strings uh, to categorical variable to factor, and uh, what uh, what R automatically finds uh, is. Uh, all the values that we can observe here, uh, they are stored in this uh, in this part, which is called levels. Uh, you see that we have three levels here, so three values that yeah, variable can take. Uh, actually, we can look at these levels. I think we have a special function for that. So if I just want to find all levels of uh, a particular variable, I can use uh, this function. And we can also uh, find frequency table of this thing. Uh, so as you see, uh, this actually, um, how do you think, what is the type of this, of this table? Actually, I'm not sure that I know the answer, but let us check. Are the absolute frequencies? Yes, they are absolute frequencies, yes. Uh, and, uh, okay, this is a special type table. I thought uh, I thought it would be just uh, a named, a named uh, vector, but never mind. Um, for example, if I want to convert uh, this to uh, to relative frequencies, I can, 
I can just divide it by, for example, number of elements in my variable city. And then I will get uh, relative frequencies. Also, I think I can find mode of this variable. Uh, that's strange. No, no, it is not. It is not the mode that I thought about. How to find mode in statistical? Uh, I don't know. Okay, I can just find. Let me Google it. How to find mode in R? Yeah, what is what is the table? What is the nature of this? Is it an operator or was it? What is it? Uh, table is a function. Uh, table is a function that uh, finds uh, that finds if you if you put just one uh, categorical variable uh, in this function, it just uh, it just creates this. Uh, table with uh, absolute frequencies. If you put uh, two uh, two uh, categorical uh, variables there, it creates contingency table. But we will discuss we will discuss them later. Okay. Okay. It seems that there is no there is no uh, built-in function in uh, in R. Okay, uh, there is there is a workaround to find mold. Uh, we can find table, and uh, then we can sort this table, and um, then we can get names of this sorted table. So I just get this first row. And then we want to get last element here. For example, I can just length. Oh, let me just uh, sort it uh, in the opposite direction. And then get element number one. So this is how to find median. Of course, we can uh, just write our own function that do uh, this thing uh, to to do it. But probably it is not so widely used function. So are there any questions? I think we have two minutes. <laughs> 